Hello, so Talking Togs today, I've got a very special guest, Bruce Smith, the fashion photographer. Well, I hope I can call him a friend because we've known each other quite a while, but this is still always an honour and a privilege to talk to him because uh, he's got a lot of interesting things to say about photography. So welcome, Bruce. This is fabulous to have you here chatting. Lovely to see you, Tim. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's great. And I'm loving the hat because we, we ought to comment on the hats. Yeah, well, got... hats are a, if you want to be a good photographer, the, the, one of the first things you have to have is a, is a good hat. It has its use. It's keeping the brain warm, <laughs> which is the key one. And where yours is concerned, keeping the, keeping the rain off your cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All my glasses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, li I like in the French um, the French theme there with the beret. Well, the little beret, yeah. It's sort of, uh, it's, I actually I don't wear it that much, actually, because if you actually come to France, nobody wears them. Apart from ah. them. <laughs> not, a very, a... not a very French thing to do anymore. Oh, no. Stripy shirt, onions around the neck, and a yeah. beret. <laughs> I haven't succumbed to the stripy shirt yet. No. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 Bruce. You are now residing at the moment in Bordeaux, aren't you? Uh, no, I'm actually about 45 minutes outside Bordeaux, north okay. of Bordeaux. Okay. <clears throat> in a place called Clarac, which is a very small town, but, um, but it's sufficiently sort of far enough out to be qu very quiet and rural. And uh, when we look out of the windows here, we just see trees and uh, forest and... Um, and uh, paddocks with horses in and stuff, so it's very, it's very tranquil. And, oh, uh, sounds. But Bordeaux is not. I mean, it's a little, you know, it's a little way to get to it each. You know, if you want to pop in, so you have to plan your, your journey. You have to have things to do that are that are worth making the trip for. So, are you are you liking the the vibes there at the chateau? Is it a good? Uh, uh, yes, it's lovely. It's sort of a, um, uh, it's a family home as well as a, a creative retreat. Um, I mean, at this point in time, it's mostly a family home. Okay. Um, but uh, every so often, we have a uh, people come for yoga or for uh, writing retreats or um, um, any type of sort of creative activity. I mean, the, the the plans are for any type of creative activity where people can come and stay um, and either just contemplate or they can come and learn something. Um, uh, so there's lots of lots of plans uh, in That's mind. That's good. So. So That's good. Well, I, it's very nice. It's, it's much. It's far better for me living here than than it was in England. Um, That's a nice. the standard of quality of life and stuff. So, so, so it's, it's a contented Bruce. Yeah, contented and relaxed. <laughs> That's, good. That's yeah. good. And you can probably get a nice little red wine there as well, no doubt. You can, and it's <laughs> be priced as well. Although actually, I don't. I mean, I, I mean, I have had my moments where I've sort of consumed a fair amount of it, but I've actually cut back a little bit because my, my style <laughs> is a bit tight. So, 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 so you're, you're, um, you're still uh, shooting because I keep yep. seeing stuff um, of uh, commercial stuff and that, that looks like a wonderful setting to, to yeah. shoot commercial fashion photography. Yeah. And, and also you're, um, you're doing training and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I, I have done a um, half a dozen or so sort of one-to-ones here where people come and I, I bring my models either from Paris or from London or um, um, and they, they come and they stay and spend sort of four or five days here. We, sh and we shoot for a couple of days and do some pre-production and post-production. Um, but it's just, because it's a, on the one-to-one -one base, well, you know, you've experienced it yourself. It's like... Um, there's so much ground that you can cover. Mm. Fixing the things that need to be fixed and encouraging the things that are actually that are that are right about the way people work. And as you know, 99% of it is about is the communication aspect of it. Absolutely. You Absolutely. can learn all that technical stuff. You can learn about <laughs> you know fiddling about with lights and stuff. But to get that little that little extra stuff in a picture, it's about the you that you put into it. And yeah, you know this with. <clears throat> We've talked about this before. So it's, yeah, uh, but it's but it, <laughs> I, it, it, it's a message that needs to be repeated in my in my view oh, yeah. because uh, any number it, of times. 
because uh, it's um, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm feel privileged that I have had a one to one session when you were in England, and uh, I, I, there's little tiny things that you um, I remember still from it. And when yeah. I'm shooting, um, there's like there's the voice of Bruce saying, "Get more <laughs> energy in the shot," or yeah. Do something like that, and it's kind of like you, what you've implanted. Yeah. Uh, some of those little lessons, they're kind of like they soak in to me. So when yeah. I'm doing stuff, I, I, not to be that. not to be a replica of you, because you're you and I'm me. But there's yeah. certain there's certain things that I've took taken from that, and and yeah. kind of they've kind of come into me, so to speak. Yeah, yeah is, I had to call me Jim. Change my name to Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> Yeah, on my shoulder, <laughs> a little Bruce on my shoulder saying, do this, <laughs> talk to the model. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's really good, Bruce. And yeah. I will always be thankful uh, for, for meeting and knowing you in terms, as a person, but also, especially with my photography. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good. And we're going to, by the way, I'm, I, I, this is Bruce's book. I, I, you can still get it on Amazon. I don't know if it's out of production or whatever now, but this is this, as far as I'm concerned, Bruce wrote the book. He's okay. probably he's probably got the T-shirt too, but he certainly wrote the book. Right. And, okay. and, and this this for me was a bible for fashion photography. Yeah. Very. So I, 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 when I wrote it, I thought it was a pile of shit. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not. It's, it's not. not it's not. I, it's certainly it's, not that, Bruce. Yeah, it's it was the first be... book I wrote. It was like, and it was one of those things where you, you don't necessarily value what you know, what what information that you actually have for other people. Um, because when you when you've been doing this for well, not when you've been doing it for a long time, but the process of learning about taking pictures that I mean that I went through, for instance, was actually learning by learning by experience. You know. Yeah, making mistakes, shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. And actually, I didn't. I mean, I had little words of advice and stuff, but I didn't have. I didn't actually. I mean, I, well, I can't read. I can read, but it's like I'm not one of these people who's going to sit down and read a book and then learn from it. I have to do it, you know. Yeah. And of course, I know, when I wrote the book, I had a lot of. It was very difficult for me to actually to to break everything down and to segment the whole process. Yeah. As, as you know, a book has to have a table of contents and it has to make sense, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, so anyway, I actually got a little bit of help from my, my first editor wasn't, wasn't very helpful, but my second editor really sort of, um, you know, put it down on, a, on the flat, basically. And we created what's called a, um, like a flat view of the whole book, you know, with coloured spaces to be filled in. And it made it very easy because I, I like to... You know, I like to be very visual when I'm doing something, even if it's as, as intense as writing about something. And you, I had little boxes to write to fill those little boxes. Not literally, but, you know. Yeah. I laid the book out in little, I mean, had a colour scheme, you know. And I'm still the same, still the same in the sort of processes of, of, of thinking about stuff. And it, even my filing system for my images, I have to keep that a certain way because I, if you turn it that way, I can't understand it. <laughs> it's stupid, you know. So <laughs> Now that book was written on the basis of that, but when I finished it, I'm thinking, well, you know, hopefully the world will like it, you know. No, I, I, it's it's um, like I've, sometimes I'm on forums and things and social media, and people say, write down a book, a photography yeah. book that's been, meant something to you or has been helpful, and I always quote this because it's, yeah. there's a lot of practical stuff in this, Bruce, where it goes. From this section to this section, and kind of what I would call industry type stuff. So it's not yeah. just. And on top of all of that, there's lovely images. So yeah. it's kind of for me, it's it's the one I always uh, um, uh, recommend to people. So anyway, Thanks. well done for doing Thanks it, for that, Tim. Bruce. Thank you. It hasn't made me rich. <laughs> well, it might not have made you rich, but you've shared some knowledge, and that's part of what it's about in life, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, I'll tell you a little story about the book, as um, and then we can sort of. I mean, obviously, we need to sort of move on, talk about what we're doing here. But it's all about photography. It's all about, as in, I know how much you like to to share and to encourage and sort of help other people and stuff. I do I mean, all the time on your posts and stuff. So you're 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 one of those people who probably more so than I am. You know, I share my images out there, and if somebody asks me questions, I'll answer them. You know, because I wrote the book and stuff. But I'm not a 
I'm not like constantly there like you are, encouraging people and giving people sort of, uh, I'm not sort of, I don't see sort of giving advice, but I certainly see you, you know, you're giving people praise for their work and stuff, but I think that's really, very nice. I can't do that on a daily basis, but well, I probably could, but I... Yeah, no, that's fair enough. But that's, again, that's part of the reasons why I like you, because you're, you're one of those people who does actually share, you know? Uh, but coming back to the, the, when the book first came out, I got a message from one person on a little, on Facebook Messenger, I think it was, and the, and the, the message was, oh my God, I can't believe I'm actually speaking to you. I'm in tears, <laughs> crying. You don't know how much you helped me in, 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 my, in my life, you know? That's uh, lovely. A little, little bit of smoke up my... Up my <laughs> But it was very nice. But anyway, they, towards the end of it, said so there was one line of text in your book that was about, you know, listen, if you want to do this, you, you, you can't just sit in your backside. You've got to get up and you've got to get out there and you've got to really work at, at making pictures and taking pictures and taking pictures and don't let anything get in the way of it. And that's the only way to grow as a photographer, you know. Um, and uh, I'll never forget this message, you know. Yeah. And the guy, the guy said, he said, two, two years ago, I was... On the street and drinking and drugs and stuff, with no particular, no particular sort of, um, uh, what's the word for it? No future, you know. Yeah. And he said, I, I, somebody, he was always interested in photography, and I think either he bought the book or perhaps read it, I don't know, in a library or something. I don't know. But he said, I read your book. He said, and he said, and two years later, I now have a wife who's having a second child, and I live in a really nice house in a nice place, and my business is going well. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's the kind of feedback you want. <laughs> exactly, and that's, that's really sort of, encouraging. Yeah, so that's what changed my mind about the way I thought about about my book because, but if if only one person has benefited from yeah. from that work, and it was a lot of work. I mean, it, they say you could write that sort of book in three months, but it took me nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's typing, it's... With, one, typing with, with with two fingers. <laughs> words with two fingers. No, it's, it's that's yeah. cool. No, it's all cool, Bruce, and I'm happy to chat about whatever with you because it's all it's all good. Um, but what are, what what we what we're kind of planning to do? Yeah, is we're going to have a look um, at I forget I think it's six images something like that. Of, yeah. Um, what we did is because I've I've got my finger in all sorts of social media pies, but I've got a little Facebook group. Yeah. Um, and uh, I I said to the guys and girls that I'm doing this chat with Bruce. And uh, which which images do you fancy um, hearing him chat about? And so yeah. they've come up with a selection. Mm -hmm. And if the technology works right, this, okay. I'm going to attempt to share this now so we can hold your breath, everyone. Hold on to your hats. Um, and hopefully you'll, um, we'll both see, see the image and, and everyone will see the image. And then you can put forth some uh, stories relating to it, Bruce. Okay. Just two secs. I'll do, I'll do my best. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, okay. Right. Hopefully okay. you're seeing an image now, Bruce. I am seeing an image, yes. And it's an image that I'm very proud of. Good. And um, it's got a lot of things in the picture, you know, and there's a lot of I mean, do, I mean, how do you want me to talk about this? Do well, to... I can, honestly, we can go in different. I mean, I'm looking at the lighting, for example. Yeah. I'm looking at the connection because I, I think connection is a <laughs> massive thing, and you, you're you're a master at it. There's a huge connection between that yeah. model and us viewing it. Um, mm -hmm. There's the styling of the, yeah. that headpiece and, and yeah. stuff. There's, you chat chat around it. How you remember it? Was it a, a while back that was shot? It's quite a number of years ago. Yes, it's um, it's going back sort of God, nearly twenty years ago. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll, I'm gonna I'll break it down then as you as you suggested. Okay, okay. I mean first of all, uh, it's actually shot for a bridal magazine. Okay. It was the cover of a bridal magazine, but it was done. It was finished in color. I shot it in color and black and white. Okay. And, uh, I, again, talking about technical stuff, but I don't like to talk about technical <laughs> stuff. And I, I, I will have shot it as a, as a raw and JPEG. You know, I keep a, my workflow. I um, need to see my images very quickly, and I need to show images very quickly. So I, I present the JPEG. Uh, on screen to my client whilst ah. the raw files are loading. So the JPEGs load dead quick, you know, so seconds I can be showing my client the, the files. So it's shot as a raw file, you know, um, and uh, it was shot at a, a studio in North 
East London, or sort of North London, okay. called the Chocolate Factory, I think it was called, or the Biscuit Factory, I think. Chocolate Factory. And it's on a huge big white cone. Now, if you look at the background, so the background's almost black, you know? um, but um, my model is probably about 20 feet away from the background. Okay. And the, the main key light on her is a half meter softbox. Right. Um, I think it was probably on, it's probably a Bron Impact kit, a very, 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 very old Bron Impact kit um, that I had, that I bought thousands of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's light, you know? Yeah, it was all this digital stuff, it was, uh, I mean, the, 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 the most technical thing about it was it was an infrared sensor flash sinking system, trigger okay. system. Um, and it would it would fire. I I would either plug a cable in and fire it from a cable, or I'd use another flash head on very 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 low power on manual, like a sixteenth or a thirty second power to trigger. Okay. I hate, I hate cables everywhere. So anyway, but the the, the little half meter softbox is almost actually on top of her. Ah. It, and so it's um, very close. The lighting, the the main yeah. light, is very close to her herself. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Well, that's what creates that lovely quick fall off. Right. Okay. It's, it's to do with the inverse square law. Okay. I'm going to impress your your audience with <laughs> the light light from a point source. Right. And the only true point source of light is the sun. Okay. So the 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 mathematics doesn't always work out quite right. But um. Um, light from a light from a point source falls off in proportion to the square of the unit distance from the source, which basically means the nearer the light, the higher the contrast. Um, yeah, I like that version, Bruce. That's more my level. <laughs> yeah. Because the light is falling off. Okay, yeah. the light is actually by if your subject is very close to the light, the power hitting her, the front of her face, you know, yeah. is much brighter than the light that's hitting the sort of. The darker side of the face. Yeah, yeah, sure. And also, hence the hence the white background behind, yep. because she's twenty odd feet away from it, being dark, not yes. white. Yes. Okay? Now, yes. Now, so that's the first thing. So you can see it's at a, a forty-five degree angle from camera, slightly sort of higher up, you know. Yeah. I'm riding close to her to get that lovely fall off, and on the on the background, I have a small um, honeycomb grid. Spot. Right. It was down on the floor. This shot's been flipped, by the way. It, it was the other way round, but I prefer it this way round. Okay. Um, but and there's another little grid spot. It actually would. It was on the right, but it's actually on the left. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, to create that separation on the dark side of her, light side of the background, and light side of her face, dark side of the background. That gives you a good depth. Okay. Creates depth to the picture, and also creates separation without necessarily putting a backlight on it. Because most people just go, oh, I'm going to put a backlight on it, you know? So you start to diminish the quality of that one light source on your subject. Do you know what I mean? Yes, 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 lights, yes, you know? yes. I've always yes. been, how many lights do you need? Okay, well, I've, <laughs> got, I've got one. That's all you need, again. Okay. Although this is two lights, you know? Yeah. Um, so um, I can't remember what I shot it at. It's probably something like 5.6 or something, I mean, um, her eyes are sharp and the fabric sharp, so it's probably it could be anything. I don't know, probably f8, f11, possibly. I don't know. I don't even know what lens I shot it on, but it will have been shot probably. Uh, my favourite lens is a 17 to 55, so it's probably been at the at the higher end of the the 55. Yeah. On a non full frame sensor. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what I was shooting at the time. I think it was a D2H actually. Okay. So it's a very it was a press camera. It was a sports. Nikon body, so it's very right. fast and very robust, but the the, the digital files were only really small. Okay. And actually, if you look at this, I'm looking at on my full screen here. Right. And it's beautiful, beautiful sharp, you know. Yeah. So, oh, it's, it's it's smashing. The uh, the the eye contact is for me is is a big. Yeah. I love the light, like what we yeah. just talked about, the contrast, but. I love the, the connection you get yes. with with the with your subject, and that's an, a really important thing as far as I'm concerned yeah. myself. So I mean, my um, uh, I'm going to come I'm going to come to that, you know. Yeah. Um, because the thing is, there's, there's there's several things you've got to get out of the way before you get to that point. Okay? Right. Because the, the you have to be you've got to be happy with your technique. 
okay, your technology. You'll be happy with your camera, with the way it's set, the, with the, and then with the with the you know, with the lighting, how you're gonna light it, get yeah. that all set and all organized, okay, and get that out of the way, okay, get your camera settings out of the way, and you, then your composition out of the way. How we're gonna frame this up? And yeah. When you've got all those things sorted out, you're right, okay. Not, not, the picture hasn't happened yet, okay. You've been doing technical stuff, okay. Now the quicker you can get through that technical stuff, yeah. Yes. The faster you get to that point of let's make some music, okay? Let's make some, let's create some magic in this picture. Excellent. It's not about. I see so many photographers that get everything. They fiddle and fiddle and fiddle, and they go and they take five frames. Although I'm not going to criticise it, but I was watching some of the the top photographer programs with my mate Nigel, you know, Nigel Barker. Um, and I actually watched there was one guy. He was really sweet, really nice guy. He took amazing pictures of. Of his friends up mountains and you know and crazy stuff you know, um, but obviously he's a guy who takes a picture of something that's happening in front of him. And he's not uh, not the sort of person that can actually get a you know sort of right in front of them and just have an interaction between that person, because he was doing some pictures of a, a fencer, an Olympic fencer, and he's like oh, okay, and he took like five frames. He goes okay, I've got my picture, and I'm going what? It's like <laughs> just saying, but 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 he said you've got 15 more minutes or whatever it was, you know. Anyway, um, uh, and the girl, there was one girl who was like going crazy and getting the guy to leap and jump and blah, 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 stuff. And uh, they, like, they'd already passed that point of all the technology stuff. So they get the technical right. And that's when the photography comes in. That's when the art comes in. That's when the creation comes in. It's when you've got all that technical stuff out of the way. But not to say you've got to spend uh, 20 minutes fiddling about with your tech, not tech, tech, technology and then five or 10 minutes shooting. I mean, to me, my thing is, I'd rather be shooting pictures for, uh, on average, my pictures take seven minutes from model on set to finished, on average. So you can imagine I spend as much of that seven minutes as I can making pictures. Yeah, um, exactly. So you get, you get the fundamentals right, and that leaves, leaves yeah. time for the magic. Yes, exactly. Exactly my point. So, so with this one, then the composition comes into it. I've got my idea of how I want the picture. You know, with this sort of, with her, the way she's holding the hands and stuff. Yeah. And I said to her, right, I said, that ring on your finger is extremely expensive, you know. I said, I want you to sell that ring to me through your eyes. You know? ah. and, and then we, I mean, so we worked on this, you know. Ah. It's more intense and making that, and getting her to tighten her muscles up and to keep yeah. that look going yeah. and stuff. And making my usual sort of positive noises and stuff. And, <laughs> To actually encourage. I mean, I don't care. Most models actually, when they first start shooting with me, they burst out laughing at my what my methods. <laughs> but it works. Yeah, of course it does. Like this, yeah. is where, this is the stuff that you don't read in the books. This is Absolutely. the stuff that nobody seems to present on their videos. You know, they yeah. take you through all this long technical stuff. They often take a very simple, straightforward picture. You know, okay, and then they go, that the picture's going to happen in Photoshop. Well, hang on a second. <laughs> If the picture hasn't happened in camera, it's not a picture. It's not a. <laughs> oh, it is a picture. It's okay. It's no longer a photo. No longer a photograph or a photographic portrayal of somebody. It becomes then another thing. Remember? Yeah, no, I understand. <clears throat> and I understand. That stuff that's in there is stuff that's uh, created from a relationship you know, between yes. her and I, and both of us together. Although me encouraging that connection. And that energy that you look in that because you look at that picture and you think, what's going through her mind? Yeah. You know, who is she talking to? Who is she thinking about? You know, my yeah. my objective is to have her looking at the camera like this and actually thinking about me. <laughs> okay. Thinking about how I want her to be thinking about me is yeah, how I good. how I how I um, what I want to see in the picture. So yeah. That's the relationship that's going on. It's not just about lighting and cameras and even no, composition no. and even about the clothes and stuff. The clothes mean nothing. The clothes just have to be nice, you know. And also, there's a, another important thing happening here is if you look at the your if you track your own eye through the picture. Yeah. Okay. Now you've got to imagine because you've looked at it, you're already biased by her <laughs> eye, and and you 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 have been controlled as to exactly where you are required to look at the yeah. picture. Because of the way the composition works, you've been led through the picture. Uh, although you think she's drawing you in, you've not. You've been led through the picture because ah. 
if you think about if you look at any point in the picture pick her elbow for instance the bottom of her elbow your line of vision goes up through her hands and into her face and you know my 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 wonderful uh, um fibonacci spiral yes 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 yes, yes. Uh, number sequence okay yes, um, yes. and just imagine that fibonacci spiral on there coming yeah from the left around to her eyes even if you go the other way it does the same okay and that's what draws you into a picture um, um, and also when I'm so used to taking pictures of of things that need to be solved and with, I've just noticed something I didn't retouch <laughs> well, I haven't retouched the picture I then but I just noticed something that I should have retouched you know and it's a little label a little tab that they hang them up by and I didn't uh, never sort of spotted it before but I don't like retouching my pictures so you know um, oh, talking about retouching, this has only been converted in black and white and contrast punched up. It's not had any fancy stuff done to it. You know? no. um, I left a little tiny bit of green in the ring, um, deliberately. Ah. Um, so, um, what yeah. else can we say about this? It's, uh, no. it's a, a picture I'm very proud of. It, it, it draws a lot of attention. It is no, it's it's a, it's a super shot. It's an absolute so, super shot. And and styling. It, Sorry, Tim. Styling, you remind, remind styling, me. Styling, yeah, styling, yeah. yeah. Especially like you've got this headpiece going on and... The headpiece yeah. wasn't a headpiece. The headpiece was actually a sash from round her waist that tied in a bow at the back. Ah, now that is a, so that I is a story. A, <laughs> I was working with a, it was a, a, an editorial team, but the, the people from the fashion magazine, they came and they sort of, they first of all, they looked at the first two shots that we did and they went, well, we're, we're going now. <laughs> <laughs> And they left me, the, leave me, my hair and makeup artist, and my model to just get on with it. So they took it off after about 11 o'clock in the morning. So it was fantastic. We could just have fun. When we had tons of accessories to play with and stuff, yeah. and about 16 dresses. Um, but this one, I, I, I think it's, I think, I'm not sure, I think it's by a girl, a design label called Chanty Claire, I think. Um, I can't. I'm, I'm, I might be wrong. It's 20 years ago. But <laughs> anyway, the um, his, his name, was, um, the hair and makeup artist, was named um, um, Volpe. Um, Italian name. Volpe meaning fox. Can't remember his first name. It, it'll come. But anyway, it was his idea. Let's try this. Let's put this sash on on her head. <laughs> well, I think it was. He did well. But, he did. But, Simple, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, Bruce. I think that there's, there's um, something that comes out in your, in your book, and something you learn, especially in fashion photography. Um, yeah. Or I learned it is that you start off thinking, well, it's about me. Then, yeah. you, then it's about you in the model, and then yeah. after a while, you realise it's about the makeup artist, oh, the yes. stylist, the, the yeah. this, the that, and it's a team effort bringing the whole team together. And and you, that's what you've that little story illustrates that idea that you've got someone else that says well why don't we try this and you yeah. say well let's give it a go and yeah. then we end up with this this iconic photograph <laughs> yeah yeah his name was lorenzo volpe oh, okay well yeah. well right. done well done that person that was a super yeah. super idea because i like yeah. it <laughs> so this is again as you say you know, it's a team effort we yeah. as photographers get all the praise you know or a lot of the praise but we cannot do it without having a good team. Absolutely. Starting with a great model, and you know my philosophy about these things, do not shoot SH1T. No. <laughs> pictures, just pictures of SH1T. Yeah. Um, so you have to shoot, uh, I, not everybody can be photographed, you know? No, also, exactly. If you're, if you're wanting to do this as a career, for instance, yeah. you have to look at the, look at what the industry is doing, and yeah. the, the quality, or when I say the quality, the type of look, you know, that yeah. the, the, the one person thinks is photogenic, not everybody thinks they're photogenic, but your pictures in your portfolio, if you want to present them to people who are buying, you know, commercial fashion photography, advertising fashion photography, editorial fashion photography, you've got to look at what the industry standard is, you know? Yeah. You can only actually work with people who are the who are in the industry already on the on the end entering the industry or you know or yeah. somebody who actually definitely has the potential to be a commercial model and I don't mean a model 
sorry Model Mayhem and stuff or whatever, but you know, there's a, there's 99% of the models on Model Mayhem that I wouldn't I wouldn't point my camera at. Yeah. They're not attractive people or anything else. It's just that they're, they're, if I put their pictures in my portfolio, my clients are going to go, well, you've got amateur models, you know. Um, even some of them are professionals. They're making money doing it, you know, but they're not the models that are would be accepted. Like, a, like an industry standard type model. Industry standard, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you, if, this is if, if you're just having a fun, you know, yeah. and making pictures because it's your, your hobby or yeah. maybe you're earning some money doing it, it's, it's you know, What's the difference at the end of the day? Yeah. Um, 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 uh, it's just if you want to go out there and present yourself as being a an editorial fashion photographer, you're going to go in and see the editors of magazines. Um, yeah. They're going to be looking at your pictures, going, "Well, you know, you need to be tasky with the agency models, not, you know, go and see Storm or go and see Models One or go and see Premier or go and see um, Elite or go and see you know these top agencies because they're." Yeah. That's, that's when you start to get your pictures in your portfolio, like the pictures that are going to be in the magazines. And until you've got to that point where you actually you have tested and tested and tested and tested and tested um, with these type of models, okay, you might be able to pick up a little job here and there. But if you want to be serious about in this industry, that's what you've got to do. You've got to have a book with beautiful pictures of industry standard agency models. Sure. So it, I mean, it's me. I mean, okay. Everyone thinks it's very difficult to actually sort of break into this. Okay, it, 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 it is difficult to break into this. If it was that easy, every Tom, Dick, and Harry would be doing it. They're going to have to <laughs> it. doing it. But it's actually, it's um, the process, if you're confident in yourself, um, the process is actually not that difficult, and it's not that complex. It's just about having a little bit of um, courage, yeah, yeah. confidence, okay? Um, you're going to get rejected, so you can't be. If you're insecure about yourself and your pictures, forget about it because you're actually going to get slapped down. <laughs> you know? and I, I've been slapped down. I've been to see fashion editors of magazines and been told, "Well, your pictures aren't really our style, or your pictures are a bit dark, or your pictures aren't really what we're looking for." And that happened time after time after time after time. Or people go, "Oh, I like I like this picture in your book. Why is your portfolio just of pictures like that?" <laughs> I'd give you, I'd give you, I'd give you an editorial shoot tomorrow, and that was Glamour, New York. You know, <laughs> but I don't want to shoot all my pictures the same. Thank you very much. You know, um, I, I, I mean, my route has been, I, I went through a, um, I've been very commercially minded. Although I, I shoot my pictures with an editorial feel to them, but there's still an editorial feel to them as well. You know, yeah. it's like a mixture of commerce and editorial, so it's a bit more loose. But it's not, you know, and it's not as crazy and wacky as a lot of photographers, you know. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's, 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 that's fair. Let, let me let me take you on to the next image, Bruce. So thank you for all the insight in that one. That was superb. Uh, behind every picture, Tim. <laughs> right. <gasps> okay. This, right. this so picture actually um, yeah. was one that I chose to be honest oh, okay. with you. Oh, um, I don't know about I, this one. <laughs> I I I like. I, I just, I just I, but on, on one basic level, I just really love it. Uh, but there's something about the water, the yeah. fluidness of it, the way the hair's going yeah. out. There's yeah. sort of like um, like chemise type thing she's wearing, yeah. I, I, and the look again. I, yeah. ju I just really, it just really appeals. The colours, the tones. Yeah, I mean, because I, cause no, I, my, my my thing is, people that know me know that I'm obsessed with black and white, so yeah. that I have to really force myself to do colour, which I do. But the thing is, for me to like a colour picture, it's got yeah. to be really, it's got. Do you know what I mean? It's got to light my fire. Now this is a colour picture, but it lights my fire. So right. and I, I just yeah. So tell us a bit about this one, Bruce. Okay, it was. Uh, I was doing a. Um, I was speaking at a photo convention in Johannesburg uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I, don't know, I can't remember how many, two or three years ago. And, um, um, and we actually used the garden and the studio of the guy who lent us all the equipment. He has a, um, a, a, uh, an equipment hire company. And uh, we all, I, I met everybody at the show. I mean, Johannesburg is a, it's a small community. Yeah, if you're in London, you can... You could be in London and being a photographer and not know people, you know, 
um, that are in the industry. Yeah. In a place like Johannesburg, everybody knows everybody. Okay. So anyway, at, um, at the sort of convention, like all the little clickies, the people who were in the little set scene, you know, um, all have, we all got together and hung out together. You know? So anyway, I was um, 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 not selling my courses and so much, so much but, uh, the, but we were trying to get people who were actually at the show to sign up for a post uh, expo workshops. Okay. So basically, to cover the costs of actually getting to Johannesburg, to be honest with you, because yeah. um, it was quite expensive and the the organisers weren't really paying very much, apart from basic expenses. Um, so I had to run some workshops, and this was one of the workshops that I that I ran. Ah. And uh, it was just a. Uh, um, uh, I had three days of shooting. We did a mixture of stuff. We went out to the bush and shot in the wild. And we also shot in the studio. We shot on a a, uh, a daylight studio that we built outside. And we also shot in and around this swimming pool. Ah. There, there are things you go, well, it's here. Let's use the swimming pool, you know? Yeah. What do you do with the swimming pool? You're going to do, you know, model sitting on the side of the swimming pool or model. You know, coming out of the swimming pool, a model lying by the swimming pool. Thought, no, let's shoot the model in the swimming pool. You know, um, and make it look like it's sort of semi under the water. Yeah. No, um, I, I like the way it's all um, the positioning of, of her yeah. in the water. It's like I don't know. It's like a floaty kind of. I, I don't know, but I just like yeah. it. It's yeah. it's really engaging. Well, uh, technically, it was the last shot of the day because we saved it because it was going to mess the makeup and mess the hair and mess the clothes up. Ah, okay, fair it's comment. The day. And again, it's been, it was actually shot. She was actually, the, um, I'm standing, uh, she's sort of semi uh, round if you go anti clockwise with her. Right. So go to ninth, go to vertical, so go um, 45 degrees, then go another 10 or 15 degrees. And that's how it was shot with me okay. shooting her with the camera at an angle. Um, with the sunlight going down, it was like the very, very last sort of few minutes of the day. Um, and the light was just really lovely and soft. Um, I will have started off shooting with a diffusion screen over it. Right. But, and I took, and I think, well, that's actually too soft. I want a bit of sparkle in there. Um, yeah. So I think I, I, I think that's how it was done anyway. So it's very simple. It's not a it's not a difficult shot. It's actually more difficult to actually get her to sort of control her body. Yeah. Her face and stuff while she's lying in the water, thinking she's going to sink and. <laughs> So it's a quite a tough gig for the model that one, in, yeah, in a sense yeah. of trying to deliver and be in yeah. the pose and everything else. Yeah. So but, it's just, I mean, I shot, as you know, I actually shoot a lot of frames because, you know, I'm going to do it by that is okay, that is perfect. You know? Ah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The subtle differences. Yeah, for me. between this and that, I, this the and hand that. Is, you know? My only criticism, well, okay, I can probably. I can find more criticisms on this picture, but I usually do not like backs of ha uh, fronts of hands to the camera. Oh yes, of course. I a lot of, I oh yes, of course. I yeah. hadn't thought of it in that context because of the water, but yes, I, I yes, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, but you kind of get away with it with all this hair covering her and yeah. And, and, but these, but yeah. Little, these are the little things that you've actually got to make you know part of your thing, right? Yeah. But uh, I mean. You can actually, you can over direct. You yes. can get to the point where your yes. your manner is draining the model, especially if she's giving you her all for the picture. Right. And you're demanding more and more and more and yeah. more. <laughs> and uh, you get to the point where, like, you know, I, I, have I got a picture that's going to work? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll 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 move along. And have a look at the next one that someone chose for us from the group. Oh, it's already Facebook Facebook safe. I've made it Facebook friendly, Bruce, so that we're okay for broadcasting this on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, well, this, this is yeah. this was actually shot during a week long um, fine art nude photography class that I did in Turkey. Ah. Strange because they don't like nude models in Turkey. Right. But we, uh, we were on a we were on a is it a, not a frigate, what's it called? It's like a twin masted yacht, basically. But right, it's okay. Cool. It was originally like a coastal supply ship around, okay. the, around the Adriatic. So, but anyway, we um, chartered this thing for a week and lived on it and, and sailed to different places. And much to my surprise, we could not find a soft sandy beach anywhere 
Huh? In, in and around Budrum. Oh. So we were, so anyway, this, this is one little um, area where we could shoot because it was like lots of little, you know, like private little coves or little right. intimate coves. And there was a jetty on the side so we could sort of moor the boat up and um, jump off and jump on and, and run around taking pictures. Cool. Um, um, although this was actually in May, it was absolutely freezing. Oh, no. But, and every day it was bloody raining and we were always having to work with sort of the overcast light and stuff. But anyway, this beach is just, I think you see, it's just all pebbles. And this rock that is obviously volcanic and lots of different minerals and layers and, and beautiful sort of textures of all the rocks. Anyway, I um, was trying to get this sort of picture uh, as if she'd been a sea creature washed up on the shore. And um, so we had her, and the waves were coming in and crashing over. You can see where you know her feet are wet and this. Um, oh yeah. yeah and stuff. Yeah. So it was actually waves were this freezing cold bloody water was oh. coming over her. And also though all these little rock. And this can make me going to sound terrible, isn't it? I was evil to her. <laughs> but all wow. these little pebbles and stuff were scratching her legs and her bottom and, and stuff and things. So that's sort of how she ended up on the rock. <laughs> um, but that rock, the, that rock in itself is so. It, isn't the textures beautiful. and stuff really interesting on the rock? Yeah. So anyway, but this kid takes direction extremely well and gives her absolutely everything. But as you can imagine, it being really, really cold, and she's got no flesh on her, so she was suffering. She really was suffering. And um, I said, right, well, we, you know, and um, well, this is the time to work quickly, then, Bruce. Was it? <laughs> 17 seconds. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, there, there you go, then. There you, there, there you go. Because that's, that's what happens when you get, you're in sync with the model, you're in sync with what you want in your picture. You know, yeah. Often what happens, you've got this idea in your head, but you can't see it in the picture, and it's yeah. got to happen in front of you. Whereas with her and I, it's like you get to that place quickly. And yeah. This is where it's very good to work with. But don't you, doesn't it, does, isn't this a, doesn't this story illustrate um, as well as having that good rapport, but that just how good a good model is, like yep. you know how how you know you can't overvalue them really in that sense, can you? Because they they no. really, you know they they mm -hmm. a good model is 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 something more than just a pretty face in my experience anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and even when they're in pain, she looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and her no, it, coming through in the picture, so we made we made use of it. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's like there's there's a lot of emotion there, which is really really yeah. cool. Okay, Can Bruce. It, it's, lighting wise, it's just the sky. Yeah. Um, I think I think it was a south facing beach, but it was an overcast an overcast day. Yeah. Uh, I've not got any. Not I don't even think I've got a reflector on it. I can't remember. Yeah. So it's just the soft light. And again, yes. punched up in 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 post production as to make it contrasting to bring that. Up. But I haven't used anything like I don't know what you call it. But there's this high pass stuff, you know. I I actually do put a I, I convert to black and white. Yeah. After putting the punch in, I put the punch in whilst it's still in color. Yeah. Play about with the contrast when it's still in color, and then I convert it to black and white. And then I may play about with a little bit more with the curves to get a bit more contrast to it, making sure I don't burn my, you know, lose my highlights. Yeah, sure. So I don't lose my shadow detail. Yeah. And when I've got that right, I then put a solid color layer over the top, a flat solid color layer, yeah. which I reduce in opacity to about, it could be anything from, from 50 to 80 percent. Yeah. So the image shows through behind the color. And then I actually make it hard light, and then I look at it again and think, do I? Because what happens when you've done that is you obliterate some of your tones on your on the actual image. So I then go back to the image itself, and then perhaps lift it in curves a little bit more, and then boom, that's it. What does that say? Was it? Um, um, Fanny's your aunt, and Sunny's your uncle. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fanny's your aunt. Bob's your uncle. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. It's done. Finished. All right, Bruce, let's, let's move on to the next one so we don't um, run out of time. Ah, I know it now. Oh, there's something else. Go back. Oh, Go sorry. Back. Hang on. He's remembered something. Okay. Go An essential part of this process, okay? Okay. I'm just thinking there's something else I've got to talk about. 
this is shot with a 17 to 55 lens, okay? Right. Um, right over the top of her. Uh, and a 17 to 55 on a non full frame. So it's the equivalent of a 24 or 17. Right. On full frame. So it's actually, I'm very close to her, okay? Okay. Now, one, of the, one of the, I used to shoot with long lenses and like a fashion photographer with his penis, you know? <laughs> and every photographer with their big lens, I'm a photographer, I'm a fucking lens. <laughs> And, and all the years I'm shooting with this, and I'm going, well, but, but, but there's something missing in my pictures, you know? What is it that's missing in my pictures? And I'm looking at other people's work, and I'm seeing this incredible dynamics and excitement and stuff and movement in pictures, and people like Richard Avedon and stuff. And I'm going, how the hell does he do that? You know? And it's like, it's about his energy that he's portraying. We have talked about the energy you're putting into the picture, okay? Um, but uh, you've got to be able to communicate that to your subject, and they've got to be able to feel it, you know. So I like to be close enough to my model so they can actually feel and see the energy that is being that I'm portraying or, or projecting. And, um, and you don't have to shout. You know, if I was up on the rocks, if I've got a 17 to 55, <laughs> I probably made a nice picture out of it, you know. But I wouldn't be able to, uh, she'd be sort of quite flat, okay, in her expression. Yeah. You know what I mean? It would be a little bit... It wouldn't, they wouldn't have the drama. It wouldn't have the drama if you use exactly. some huge long lens, I don't think. Yeah. And also, I'm probably screaming at her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the stuff that gets that in the picture. I was trying to do it... At, um, so be close to your model because you can communicate and you can feel each other's energy. There is a point where that energy drops off. When it yeah. becomes... You then have to work on your your directing skills, your verbal directing skills, you know, because they can't feel your energy. Okay, yeah. so, um, um, oh, there was a point to that. There was a whole point to that. There was something else I wanted to add to it, but I, I, I hope it'll, it'll come back to me, okay? Okay. But you just prompt me again. Um, I'll prompt you again. So let, me, let me round that up again. It's the... Um, well, we were talking about you want to be close and use, use a, you know, um, the lens choice. It, 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 you can close to her so you can, uh, you can keep the communication going back and forth. And, and people, this, people respond to the energy that is actually being created at the time of the shoot when they're looking at a picture. Ah, Okay, if, now that's a profound there's, thought. If there's no, if there's, if there's no, no connection, that's why I keep putting these pictures up. Connection, guys. Connection. Yeah. If you don't have connection in the picture, okay, it's a picture of something, you know. Um, but it's, it, it, it needs to be, it, it needs to be exciting. Okay? <laughs> that's most important. It needs to be exciting. What is it that you're photographing? What is it that you want in the picture? Right. Okay. And so many photographers are like pretty mice, you know. Okay. You put your hand there, great, or do, do that again, do more of that, that's really good. And well, I, I call this uh, um, uh, dentist directing. <laughs> Lift your head a little bit, okay, just put your leg there, right, put your hand on your head, okay, just turn to the camera, boom, wow, lovely, let's do that again, you know. And it's like, who wants to go to the dentist? <laughs> and now, if you want that look in your picture, Direct like a dentist does, okay? But if you want to have energy and excitement and people look at your pictures and go, wow, that energy uh, the, the, needs to be this, you. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is very, uh, yeah, very true. Yeah. <laughs> but I think some of it's, some of, it comes it's, easier it's, to some of us than others, I think. I think we haven't it, talked about Canon and we haven't talked about Nikon. Good. Because lenses is actually part of the process, you know. The camera is just a little box that records the image. Amen. The is part of the part of the process that gets you the dynamics of your picture. Yeah. Um, no. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Let yeah. let let me move on to this one. Yep. Okay. Because uh, my um, uh, my kind of partner in crime in talking togs is a is a is a wedding photographer called John Lockyer. And, oh, he's, okay. and he he chose this and he said yeah. get Bruce to talk about this because I, okay. I love it he said I love the dress I love the light the, the whole the whole vibe so that's that's let's hear what yeah. Bruce has got to say it's, about a this little bit, it's a little bit this is a this is a raw image actually this is just actually just the not even a raw image it's just a JPEG okay so it's a small two things a small file and it's also not necessarily how I would finish it the finished image has actually got the and also because they're shooting on you know, on all that uh, beige coloured, that's the back of the house, all 
So oh. this is the chateau, is it? That we, that yeah, this is, yeah, this is this is. So that's what I'm saying. It's a good. This is a good yeah. location <laughs> for commercial well, electric, shoots. I mean, there's the wire hanging out. Or the electrician hadn't was supposed to have come and put the lights up, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't spotted that, but yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I love I, the. Yeah. I like the um, the rustic door. You know, yeah, like that sort of Frenchy thing where everything's distressed. Do you know what I mean? That, shabby, I like all that. Shabby sort of. cheek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. that vibe. And that the yeah. grandeur of all that stone, it's cool. Yeah. I like the location. I think it's fab. It is, it is lovely. It's a, it's a beautiful place to shoot. You know? And the light's good there as well. It's just simple backlit and a reflector. Yeah. Um, no no flash on it. Yeah, but look, also, look at, um, look at her expression as well. She looks happy and joyful. Yeah. Yeah, well, she's a she's a great model, and she. I mean, you just have to keep her going. You've got to keep her up, like spinning plates and juggling balls. You know? And when you're doing a job like this, and you've got twelve dresses to do in a day, she's got to look as happy on the last one as she is on the first one. So no, that's, uh, that's, so this that's is where again professional model comes in. Yeah, model. of course. And also keeping it up, keep the encouragement going. Um, Keep it alive. Keep her moving. You know, she's but, just spinning around. And I mean, this is this shot. I actually went through the pictures, through the JPEGs to to, to find this frame that you wanted. Yeah. And, and and she's turning like twenty times and walking about the actual terrace. I love it. One, just the one frame where all of these things were as they were. So I think there are others that are better, but this is the one the client picked. I think. Yeah, but I, I think <laughs> and, the the thing is that. I've have t- seen it and chatted to other people about yeah. your your work and and this to me in some ways it actually symbolises that aspect of it this business about energy like get your model moving and stuff yeah. like those those words are like in my I mean sometimes when I'm doing shooting uh, I I actually want a very quiet reflective moment and but other times I'm thinking right now I. I've had them like leaping now across the road or something. Yeah. Whereas I would never have done that. I would have. It would have always been very static. And and yeah. but but w- when I look at your stuff, there's there's an energy in the movement of the, and that that I really I'm I'm drawn to. And like for example, I've looked at several of these ones where you've done these gowns, mm-hmm. and th- there's a sort of joy of life in in the shot. And yeah. I just love that. And, and this, to me, in a way, is just another one of your, you know, example of that vibe. Yeah. Can you see our our, our number sequence again? Ah, right. Your uh, your, your the, the curve, the swirl thing. Yeah. From the bottom, in the middle of the dress, to the left, slightly up her arm, through her face, to the other arm, and the little hard line leads you back. The bodice of a dress sells the dress. You know. Yeah. Everything else is the romantic story that goes around it. But the bodice is the key to that sells the dress, um, and of course the girl looking like she's really enjoying wearing it. I think yeah, big. If, you, if, you, if people are familiar with, don't look at wedding photography because wedding photography and commercial bridal wear photography are different. You know? Sure, they are not shot the same. You know? Okay, um, uh, they are shot in such a way where you know they're shot to look as perfection. You know, yeah, meticulous perfection, and. This combination between this client and myself, she and I gel together because she wants her shot how I want to shoot or how I shoot. Perfect. So we That's shoot a everything. Good scenario. Fun movement, very very little static. Even if a shot is a static shot, it's not shot static. It's actually shot with with, with movement on it. I I do not like the word pose. You know, pose is something that people did when they had an iron bar up their backside. <laughs> You know, like some pose when you've got a family or two people and they're posing for a picture right. or posing for a painted portrait where they can't move. Photography is about capturing part of life when life is alive and moving. The fabric has a life and it, when, the, when it's on somebody it becomes an extension of that person. So this is why when I'm shooting dresses like this it's difficult because you've got to shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot because the dresses aren't necessarily well they 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 are predictable. You've got to, if a model is turning, she has to turn at the right pace, you know. Yeah. So it's slightly slow motion, but you don't want it to look like slow motion. So you've got to add that extra drama into directing her, but keep her under control, keeping her move, moving slowly. Sure, the dress doesn't go flip, flip, you know, it goes flip, flip. It goes. <laughs> it goes flip. 
No, it's good. It's so good. it's um. It's good. Well, this is like this is a part of that process, and I just got her to do that twenty times or whatever it was until I'm thinking, I know I've now got the I've got the picture that my client wants. Ah, it's great, Bruce. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Um, right. I'm going to. Um, you want to know? No. I'm, I'm, to be honest, um, rightly or wrongly, I'm not too obsessed with the technical. <laughs> it's all it's all the X factor that excites me. I mean, I mean, to me, it's like the, more, the content of the pitch is more important than the technique or whatever it is. Well, yeah, it is a no oh, aspect of it that you need. And I think it was shot on a hundred and five mil Nikon. Okay. Two eight, I think, or I can't remember. There's a lens. Um, but I, can't yeah. remember, but it's probably shot at about F4. Yeah, it's it's yeah. fine, Bruce. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Right, I'm gonna move it. I move it on. Ah, uh, that's the other side of the house, same door. <laughs> ah, the door leads right through from one door to the next door. It's like um, uh, it's an entrance to the main hallway to the house, which you have seen pictures that are shot inside there too. Yeah. So, what's the story behind this one? This is actually part of uh, another one-to-one. Uh, -one. Okay. This is a girl called um, Mar Marina. Okay. Marina Nelson. She's a lovely girl. I think she's Ukrainian. And she came and we spent a couple of days doing, one day doing beauty portraits of with her, and one day doing to the nudes. Um, and this side of the house is the north-facing side of the house, where it's, it's always in shade, but always a lovely, nice, soft northern light, basically. Um, and I'm just again, I'm shooting her, and I'm having a go. And she's actually got shots of her running around the car park naked, <laughs> climbing trees naked, and running up and down the steps naked, and is just it, to is, show is, her freedom. With, with, just with, a, shot, with a shot like this, and, is there a lot of direction? Sorry? I mean, like, for example, the way she's laid herself out in the picture, is that yeah. more of her expressing herself, or are you giving her a, a yeah, guidance right, to that? A little bit. Just sort of, she was a bit... Um, uh, probably tired, I'd say the words were by the time we got to this point, because this is like towards the end of the day. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, if you don't, and if you don't keep up the sort of emphasis, um, right. you know, your model is going to get tired. They're going to go, well, um, how many more variations on their shot are we going to do? You know, <laughs> you don't necessarily get it. You know, uh, and or they are tired, and it's like this yeah. is where you've got to be able to. You've either, you know, if you've still got three shots to do. The photographer has to lift the energy, so you've got to yeah. push a little bit. Okay. But sometimes out of that comes that extra bit of stuff. Well, we're nearly finished, and we've got some amazing pictures. Let's just get one more fantastic picture, and I'm sure you're probably the same. It's like, and so you lift the energy up. Otherwise, yeah. it goes flat. So, and so just push a little bit. And okay. You get that, that one a little bit extra. Put your head up in the sky, a little bit in the sky, and yeah, just adding a little bit. And the dynamic off square. Yes. It's, it's not something that I think about. It's something that happens. Okay. Um, I've got my camera over to the side. Yeah. I have my hand over the top, you know? Yeah. So I'm looking through my camera like this. And I hold okay. the fence down because the photographer's, it's never perfect. If you, if you take all your pictures up here, you're not being a good photographer. You need to, you need to bend. Photographers need to be here, which is why we've all got bad backs. <laughs> I don't know why. It's always like, I, I think actually, actually, the um, that's another thing. You, uh, I mean, it's a long time ago now, but you yeah. you picked me up on which from when I was having a one to one with you. Just a small thing, but yeah. it, I've taken it with me everywhere. My shooting position. Yeah. So like, I used to always be standing Elevated. up, and now yeah. I'm sort of at waist height when I shoot, yeah. or even be. lower if I want yeah. to get a so really dramatic shot. Solar plexus every time, especially if you're, and this is something that I've learned from shooting with wide lenses because if you're close to your model and yeah. you're shooting high up, you're going to make her legs look like chicken legs <laughs> and her head look like an elephant. Yeah, so, no, it's, it's, you, little, it's little things like that, um, you know, that it's good, it is good to take on board and, and that's the kind of thing I have registered. Now, you don't even have to, I don't even have to think about things, I just automatically... Yeah. Um, I I'd automatically do so. It's quite funny actually. Sometimes when people ask me stuff, and because I love helping and sharing and stuff, but sometimes I have to really because it comes so organic that I find it hard to break it down into a robotic thing. Do, do you yeah. understand what I mean? It yeah. just becomes kind of intuitive. But yeah, but that's just something tangible. When you're talking about your positioning, it just flashed back into my brain. 
Well, I mean, it's like anything else. Like so much about what we put into a picture is, um, uh, it's, I mean, it's physics. You know? Yeah. It's, we are we are affecting people visually because of the because of the dynamics. You know. Yeah. I mean, just take the difference between color and black and white. You know? Yeah. I mean, everybody goes, oh, black and white. It's so much more artistic. You know. That's bullshit. It's, the reason why black and white tend to be more popular, or people like it, they feel they like it, and it touches them more, is because you're getting, as, as against I'm talking about an, a, a same image, color or black and white. Okay, you can't. Right. Uh, and this color image with that black and white image. Okay, so okay. between the same image shot in color or in black and white, or right. finished in color or black and white. If you think about it, if you think what's happening is your brain and your emotions are are being affected by all of the, the, the content of the picture. Yeah. You know, the physical aspects of the picture and emotional aspects of the picture. Okay. So let's just say, for instance, um, we broke that image down into percentages. You know. So let's just say 50-50 of it is the color information as against just the contrast. When I say contrast, I'm talking about the brightness range, not the specific contrast. Okay. Yeah. So the tones in the picture. Okay. Yeah. As a, the color information in the picture to get the same message across. So if you imagine, okay, we're taking away 50%. Well, let's let's make it 25%. We're taking away 25% of the information that your brain is having to process before it gets to the emotional stuff of the of the picture. So you're cutting down the amount, but you're cutting it down about to to 75% of what it would take you to look right. at the color, to see everything that's in the black and white image. Uh. In the black and white image. So your brain thinks it's looking at something more artistic. Ah, so this, so oh, Bruce, you you're not gonna take the magic out of me loving my black and whites, are you? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't mean to say you still shouldn't try to put all that magical stuff in the picture. No. <laughs> to be honest with you, you should actually put more. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, fair comment. No, it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I I think we've got a last one to look at. Okay. Yeah, we have. Oh, now, this is a dramatic one. Yeah, this is a when you're doing a. Again, this is a class again. This is actually at, uh, at Hampton Court House School where I used to do my location classes in the summertime and Easter time. And uh, it's got these lovely colours. All the walls are all these lovely greens and um, distressed and stuff. And this hall is like a baroque style. Um, it's a, a 18th century villa um, out near Hampton Court Palace. So it's sort of, I don't know if it's, that was the, uh, the style of the interior is Baroque, you know, as in the main hall. There's lovely, lovely big windows. It's overlooking Bushy Park. You know? And again, it's, um, it's sort of uh, north east facing. So this is afternoon, afternoon light. You know? um, and I just thought, I, you're looking around and thinking, hey, well, I, need a, I need a, to do another picture. I need to sort of demonstrate doing another picture. What am I going to do? So I thought, well, I, I like this setup. I like this, you know, the framing of a frame, you know? Yes. Um, and the dynamics of the doors, because the doors are a good, lovely detail. But I also wanted to create that little bit of, um, that little bit of voyeuristic sort of, uh, voyeuristic stuff. She's a little bit too uh, posed for my liking. I would have liked to have had, a dynamic posture that wasn't posed that looked a bit more natural, but you know, um. <laughs> you're, you're, you're always wanting more, bro. So even when you've got a winner, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, if you don't do that, you don't improve next time. You know, it's yeah, like true. I, you know, I look at pictures and I think, and I go, oh, well, where should done this? And why have they done that? Or I couldn't quite get it when I was actually shooting it. You know, it didn't quite get there. <laughs> Oh, Bruce. Uh, the um, so again, you've done, you've got that tilt again on on this, yeah. because the, which is interesting, right? Because um, I think it, I, I love it, and and, it, and I it works, but it's quite interesting because I must be honest. When I approach, if I was trying to like shoot through a window or yeah. or a doorway or an aperture like that, I would almost feel that I'd be a very naughty boy if I didn't make it very. Like yeah. parallel, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And well, so what, when I saw okay. that, I it, thought, oh, goodness me, but it works. But I'm right. just saying, I, I find that interesting because I almost feel constrained that, oh, I must make sure that my the edge of my frame it lines yeah. up with my doorway sort of thing. So I, I find that fascinating. 
genuinely. Right. Okay, well, that's because you've got you've been brought up in convention. You know? Yeah. <laughs> convention says, you know. And yeah. I, I actually quite, I actually remember one day I I had a client and I I shot a whole bridal wear collection. Now, when I'm doing a commercial shoot, I actually I shoot it safe. You know? Yeah. Or I shoot it within margins that also mean they can be squared up. You know. Yeah. So, but when you actually look at all the pictures, they're all shot at this sort of slight auxiliary. Right. And, um, I mean, she said to me once, she said, she, she was looking through the pictures, and she called me up, she says, I hate all of the pictures. Oh, dear. <laughs> what? No! <laughs> <laughs> That's no, not no, good. I'm giving up, I'm giving up. Anyway, and she, I, I said, well, what do you mean you hate all the pictures? She said, I can't stand looking at them. I said, well, what do you mean you can't stand looking at them? I hate them all, I hate them all. I go, right, okay, calm, you know, calm down. Right, now just tell me, what is it that is upsetting you? Yeah. What? About these pictures because I think they look beautiful. And she said, because they're all not square. She said, it's making me feel sick looking at them. I said, well, okay. I said, right. Um, 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 uh. Now, she's one of these people who actually sees 20 pictures that are wrong and doesn't, wow. see, the, doesn't see the five pictures that are perfect. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I said, right. I said, okay. So I also, I always have whatever file she's got, I've actually got. Okay, so I'm going, right. Let me go through them. I said, right. Okay, which ones do you like? So this one's one of the ones. Right. So okay, well, actually, if if I crop that picture by ten percent, I've got enough leeway to square it. Okay. Or I've got in, certainly got enough leeway to to actually make it not look so squiffy. You know. Um. I said, but I said, Lynn, I said, but look back at all of my pictures. Look at my portfolio. Go to my website now and tell me what is a problem. <laughs> tell me what is a problem thing about my style of my work. Yeah, and it's there. Almost every picture. Yeah, yeah. That's a bit of a that's a bit of a funny, a bit of an odd scenario, isn't it? Really, it's kind of like sort of sort of choosing to work with someone because of their style, and, and then if like, they deliver their style, and sort of saying, "Oh no." <laughs> Then you've got to take so this is where you've got to give clients a bit of flexibility you've got to like i don't know did you, did you read that thing about the, the black and white picture my first commercial shoot oh I shot yeah. it and a client wanted it her way and i wanted it my yes, way yes 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 you did well, you, you shot some of it yours and some of it hers yeah. or something with eight frames per per per, per shot yeah <laughs> on a 16 roll film Back in the day, when you were a bit more in concerned. Day, back in the day, when we had to <laughs> we spend, we spent more time loading the damn, the damn film. <laughs> now, I actually, I could load, <coughs> I could load a Hasselblad back in, I think, if I remember rightly, it was 17 seconds. Ah. <laughs> so you've got, you've got it off to a fine art in the end. Yeah, and I used to have to do it a lot. Ah. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Well, well that was interesting because it's like because I actually do like to look at my pictures with uh, with as in with the eyes of other people because I hate them all. Oh, so, Bruce! Well, <laughs> Don't say that. They're too close to you. They're you know other people. Ha you, you know, this is where we need to rely on other people to give. Not judgment, not critique or, or criticism or, 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 you know, other people looking at your work actually help you to actually look at your work yourself. They'll be, especially if they're honest with you, they'll tell you there's something missing in your pictures. But you know, whenever I'm talking about pictures, I never ask people to tell me, to show me, well, show me pictures that you really hate, okay? So I think that's another, that's probably something that I should actually try the next time I do a tour. Don't pick the pictures that you like. Pick the pick. Pick the pictures that you think are shit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll talk about them. And that's that's a, a different approach to it because you never get to talk about the pictures that didn't work. You know, um, from the point of view of other people. Um, no, I suppose also we probably these days we delete stuff if it, if it, if it's. Uh, well, I don't delete anything. If I, if I turn the camera around, you'd see I've got a. a, a Mound of hard drives around me. I never delete pictures. Oh, that's interesting. The bad ones. I don't delete them. I, I delete the goofy ones, and I delete the ones that are really out of, you know, out of completely out of focus or oh, okay. out of fire if I've been shooting flash or. Okay. I don't delete. I, I, it's terrible because I have to keep buying hard drives. I was going to say you 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 you're going to get through hard drives if you're keeping them all. Goodness. I, use a, I, I tend to use a 
a one terabyte hard drive for each client. That's good. But okay, they, well, we better we better wind it up. I mean, I could talk for you t all day, Bruce, but we, we ought to, to limit it there. But yeah. um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Bruce. It's 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 been a true pleasure and a joy yeah. hearing you chatting about your work. It really has. Yeah. And you know, it's it's just brilliant just hanging out with you, <laughs> even oh. if it's virtually like this. Well, it, it's good that actually other people will. I mean, we we could do this any time, but it's good to be good to record these things because. You know, people only have to pick up one little thing from it. You know, precisely, but, exactly. Uh, I, I also I like I like the sort of format where we we talk about things that have been done, or we'll talk about something that is um, uh, what you want to hear. For instance, this is what yeah. you want to hear, and what what I think that your you believe your audience would want to hear. Indeed, um, I exactly. could talk ever, and uh, but it's very really important to actually have a you know, to have a, a a nice line to talk around. Yeah. No, it's been, it's, 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 it's been brilliant, Bruce, and I hope we can do it again, because it's been cool. Very soon. Very soon. Well, you can do it every month if you like, you know? <laughs> well, who knows, but we'll, I'm sure... I'm it's sure. It's rainy days, and when the start the weather gets bad, I can't... Today is lovely out, but it's, a, it's beautiful sunshine here. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off, and I'm going to say um, thank you again, Bruce. It's been a... It's been an absolute uh, privilege chatting to you, and uh, we'll we'll talk again soon, Bruce.